bienvenue au spectacle des cuisines de Charles et Marie. Vive la France! My name is Hans Christian Andersen. Uh, ignore the fact that my voice is suddenly high-pitched and squeaky. Guess it's more appropriate for my appearance anyway. What you're about to watch is a video on Charles-Henri Saint-Saëns. A figure more tragic than any tale I could ever tell. So sit back, relax, and, if you can, enjoy. Charles-Henri Saint-Saëns. The legendary executioner of 18th century Paris. Famed for taking the lives of kings, tyrants, and heroes, this unfortunate contradiction was at first but a reluctant arbiter of death. A physician by trade, he was very reluctant to continue his family business, preferring to give life rather than take it. And yet, by his very hand, no fewer than 3,000 souls were claimed. This reluctance is translated into fate's grand order by Sanson doing his utmost not to kill his opponent. His single target buster noble phantasm, L'Amour Espoir, combines low damage with vanishingly small insta-kill potential. Perhaps a commitment to pacifism. To find out more, we spoke to a noble phantasm expert who wished to remain anonymous. Leonardo, what can you tell us about the main weapon in Sanson's offensive arsenal, his noble phantasm? It's bad. She's not wrong. And for all of Sanson's protestations on the value of swift, precise, and above all, clean kills, the man himself is quite frankly averse to it. While he may have helped pioneer the guillotine before and during the French Revolution, Sanson's personal revolution is turning said guillotine into a paper cut. That's if it even hits. Aside from a post-damage defense down and the aforementioned supposed insta-kill, Sanson's noble phantasm comes with no special features, making it fruitless against enemies equipped with evade or invincibility. But this is merely the beginning of his limitations. Another chink in his coat is his command card deck. While his noble phantasm is Buster, he has a triple quick deck. While this prevents him from making Buster brave chains to empower his noble phantasm, many have questioned whether his triple quick deck can help his team's star generation. To find out, we spoke with a former teammate of Sanson on if his star generation helped the party. Oh, he's bloody useless. The guy barely makes any stars. Triple quick deck? <laughs> What'd you expect? With presence concealment rank D? Hiding behind a f***ing fig leaf would provide better cover. I don't even have it and I'm better at sneaking than him. But that's not all. Sanson also lacks any form of hard protection, leaving him vulnerable to each and every attack. But... Is he really all bad? Broadcasting impartiality guidelines mandate we present his positives. For all of his flaws, Sanson is at least marginally more impressive against evil enemies. And this goes beyond just evil servants. There are many mock level opponents classified as evil as well, such as Carly and the Oprichnik. For further analysis, we interviewed several evil class servants who wished their identity to remain anonymous. Sanson's first skill, Executioner, increases his damage against evil opponents by up to 60% for three turns, and many evil servants are feeling the pinch. Ah, ah, it hurts! It's such a big increase in damage, too big! Especially on his noble phantasm, ah, I don't like it. But while many riders and berserkers echo similar sentiments, those of other classes were not so intimidated. Not that scary. The damage is okay, but enemies with class advantage are scarier. And there might be some evidence to her claims. Comparing Sanson to the main free-to-play single target caster Medea, the Witch of Betrayal handily outdamages him when fighting Sasaki Kodro, an assassin. 
Not to mention that most evil mooks are class neutral against Sanson, and some even have advantage over him. So, is it powerful? Undoubtedly. But is the buff quite as impressive as it sounds? Well, for the fact that it combines well with other attack buffs, yes. But in terms of Sanson's overall damage output, quite possibly not. But one thing that cannot be denied is the impressiveness of Sanson's medicinal skills. This manifests in his second skill, Medicine, which provides both healing and, once upgraded, a debuff clear for one ally. Many of his fellow physicians remarked upon his impressive skills, including during one incident involving a, quote, flaming, self-immolating demon king. However, when it comes to Charles-Henri Sanson, there can really only be one question that is truly on everyone's mind. Human and humanoid. Let's ask the man himself. Charles-Henri Sanson, as many here know already, your final still human study gives you a 60% damage bonus for three turns against human enemies. No, no, quite right, quite right. But is it also not true that servants, the most powerful enemies in the game, are not humans, but humanoids? <laughs> And is it not also true that whilst, yes, there are some major enemies in the game, servants even, who are classified as humans for the purposes of their story fights, that you would not be a good choice against them, both because of your low stats, but most importantly, your assassin class simply being a poor matchup for them? No! <coughs> and is it not also true that there's no buff coming anytime soon? No! No, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please, please. This is a matter of pity, not one for chastisement. Charles Henri Sansov, thank you for being on today's show. I truly admire your bravery, if not your final skill. So, after our journey today, what can be said about Charles Henri Sansov? Is he flawed? Undoubtedly. Are there buffs coming anytime soon? We can only hope. But is he at least an interesting servant? Someone that offers unique buff types in addition to a solid medicine skill? And thus someone worthy of at least partial examination, if not widespread usage? I would certainly say so. So, tell me, did you enjoy the program? Did it make you laugh? Did it make you cry? Did it make tears stream down your eyes? If you enjoyed, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, say what you will, and I will see you all next time.